Hello, my name is Angela Mani. Today I'd like to share an example of perseverance in the face of virulent racism, the Jeremiah Burke Sanderson collection. Born and raised in New Bedford, Massachusetts, where he'd gain renown as a speaker and advocate against enslavement and for civil rights for African Americans, Sanderson came to California in 1854 and immediately set to work as an advocate for the state's African American community. Forbidden from voting by the California Constitution and from testifying in court by racist testimony laws, he and other African Americans formed the California State Convention of Colored Citizens, the first of which met in 1855 at Sacramento's Bethel AME Church. At these conventions, Sanderson and other leaders strategized about ways to fight for African American testimony rights and urged lawmakers to recognize African American equality under the law. Sanderson didn't limit his community involvement to conventions. A committed Methodist, Sanderson served as a pastor for Stockton's Ebenezer AME Church on Commerce Street, a congregation that still exists today. And his diary entry for August 1862 notes his son's baptism at San Francisco's AME Church with pride. Sanderson even rescued men and women from enslavement, literally. Delilah Beasley, who relied on Sanderson's journal to write her 1919 book, Negro Trailblazers of California, noted that Sanderson regularly tried to rescue enslaved men and women in the Central Valley and recruited the San Joaquin County Sheriff to help him free one young woman held near Stockton. While his other work in the African American community was critical, what Sanderson was best known for was his work as a teacher and advocate for equal rights in education work he began shortly after he arrived in California. At the time, California schools were segregated by custom and then by an 1860 law that barred students of color from attending public schools. The result was that many African-American children had no school to attend at all. The state didn't provide a formal way to establish public schools for children of color until 1864. And even then progress was slow. In a post-1868 speech, Sanderson noted that only eight cities had schools for African-American children. A leader in the fight for public funding for African-American schools, he had established at least two of the schools he mentioned in that speech. In 1855, Sanderson established the Sacramento School, and after getting that up and running, he went to San Francisco in 1859. There he taught at the city's first colored public school in the basement of the St. Cyprian AME Church where he would eventually become principal. His papers show that he was responsible for the education of over 200 students. Despite these successes, however, in 1865, the San Francisco Board of Education demoted Sanderson back to teacher rather than allow him to supervise the white assistant hired to work for him. Shortly thereafter, Sanderson, in a display of great personal resilience, relocated to Stockton in 1868 where he set up a school on Beaver Street with the help of the Ebenezer AME Church. Sanderson's dedication was an apparent in his personal life as it was in his work. He saw to it that his own children received a solid education by teaching them himself and his diaries frequently refer to family. His letters so carefully saved in the collection at the State Library also show a tight family. This hurried note from his son William practically burst with excitement over a short trip to San Francisco. Sanderson's daughter, Mary, meanwhile, followed in her father's footsteps, becoming a teacher and writing to her father about her school. Though we have just one box, we at the State Library consider Jeremiah B. Sanderson's papers a true treasure. So much so that we are preparing to build special housings for the many unidentified family portraits this collection contains. We have also prioritized, prioritized digitizing it. Even though we have hundreds of manuscript collections in the library, the Sanderson collection is one of just six that we have placed on From the Page, a digital platform that allows volunteers and staff to transcribe historic documents. By conserving the physical materials and making his papers widely available online, we hope to not only preserve Sanderson's legacy, but to inspire others to persevere in the face of injustice.